the light we see from neon lights or other kind of lights are evidence of the Bohr atom and even more so quantum mechanics or the quantum model of the atom. When we see a neon light or basically any of those brightly colored lights what we're seeing is a gas that's sealed in a glass tube and ele with electricity going through it. The electricity somehow excites the gas and it gives off light. That light is actually a combination of a whole bunch of different colors that we can see in their light spectra. Different gases give off different colors because of different mixtures of these light spectra. The noble gases are commonly used and they give off very distinctive colors, although other gases are often used as well. So what's the explanation of all this? Remember that energy levels are represented by the principal quantum numbers. An electron is in the lowest energy state it can be and it absorbs some energy. It gets excited up to a higher energy state. It's unstable, drops back down to its lower energy state or ground state and releases energy. That energy is often in the form of visible light but it can also be in many other energies as well, part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Here's another example where it gets excited to even a higher level. It comes off and releases energy and now it has more energy wavelength and it appears differently to us. Here's an animation of an orbital filling diagram. According to the Aufbau principle, the electrons fill in the lowest energy states. According to Hund's rule, they don't double up until they have to. Some energy comes in and excites one of the electrons. When that electron is excited, it goes to a higher energy level. In this case, from the 2p to the 3s orbital. It now has more energy. This is its excited state. When it drops back down to its ground state, it releases energy. In this case, red light. What we're talking about here is energy that comes off as the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see the highest energy are gamma rays. The lowest energy of the electromagnetic spectrum are radio waves, all the way down to AM waves. Somewhere in the middle is visible light. You can see as the energy increases, the wavelength decreases. There are mathematical relationships between energy, frequency, wavelength, and the speed of light. Here we see the equation frequency times wavelength equals the speed of light. Frequency is in a unit called hertz, or cycles per second. Wavelength, which is signified by the Greek letter lambda, is in meters, and the speed of light is a constant, which is in meters per second. Here we have an equation which relates energy to Planck's constant and frequency. Energy is given in a unit called joules. Planck's constant is obviously a constant, and frequency, again, is in hertz. Putting those two equations together, we can get a relationship between energy and wavelength. Energy equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Now we can use these equations to find something out about the photons of different elect ranges of electromagnetic spectrum. The question is, what is the wavelength of a wave with a frequency of 6.7 times 10 negative 14 hertz? The first thing I have to see is I'm going to look for wavelength. That's what I'm trying to calculate, and I'm given a frequency. So I need to find an equation that has both frequency and wavelength. I come up with this. I'm looking for the wavelength, and I know the frequency. The frequency is 6.7 times 10 hertz or per second. I'm going to multiply that by lambda or the wavelength and that equals the speed of light 3.0 meters per second. To solve for lambda I have to divide both sides by the frequency and I come up with an answer of 4.48 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. I can turn that into nanometers or nanometers by going 4.48 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. I know that 10 to the negative ninth meters equals one nanometer. And so my answer comes out to be 448 nanometers. It turns out I can look at a chart of the electromagnetic spectrum and I can see that a wavelength of 448 nanometers is purple or indigo. The next question I might ask is what is the energy of this photon? 
again, I need an equation I can use. I'm looking for energy, and I'm given here, I'm given both frequency from up here, and I'm also given the wavelength, which I just calculated. I can use either one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the frequency, and I know that I can use energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So my energy is going to equal Planck's constant, 6.4 joule seconds, and I'm going to multiply that by my frequency, which is 6.7 hertz or per second and I come up with an answer of by multiplying them that is the energy of this photon I can have another type of problem what is the energy of a photon that has a wavelength 592 nanometers I'm given wavelength and I'm looking for energy so I need an equation that has wavelength and energy in it and I have this, energy equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So my energy equals Planck's constant. I'm going to multiply that by the speed of light. And I'm going to divide that whole deal by my wavelength, which is 502 nanometers. I can't use 592 nanometers because I'm using my speed of light in meters. So 592 nanometers and I know that 10 that 1 nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth meters so my answer comes out to be that's the number I'm going to use down here my energy then comes out to be this wavelength of light of 592 nanometers by looking at the electromagnetic spectrum I can see is yellow that's what it would look like to our eyes Remember, all these lights we see, all the entire electromagnetic spectrum, is just evidence of the quantum mechanical model. Excitation of electrons to an excited state, and then the drop down to ground state, or some state below the excited state, with the release of energy that comes off as a photon. We can use these properties for our own good. Because remember, chemistry is fun.